Hello. Uh, welcome to my review of the Wallet Drone, the so-called world's smallest quadcopter. Um, I bought this, um, I think I bought, plunged it in like July, I think, and I got this from Indiegogo. Um, it's made by Access Drones, and um, it's it's pretty small, obviously. Uh, they they claim it's the world's smallest quadcopter, and I really have my doubts about that, but I'll um, I'll get back to that in a minute. First off, let's take a look at this. Um, it's you know the idea is you can charge it in the controller here, and the controller is roughly the size of a wallet. I mean, it's a thick wallet. You can see relatively. This is, this is my wallet, and the dimensions are about the same. Um, it's considerably thicker, but that's probably just because I'm poor. But, um, you know, I will say that I wouldn't want to carry this around in my back pocket because this plastic is pretty flimsy. And uh, if you were to sit on this, it would be all over very quickly. Uh, it runs on four AA batteries, as you can see, and uh, charges up with this little coaxial barrel type charging port. One thing that's kind of funny is when you put it in to charge it, um, you can see the Axis Drones logo is upside down, which is, I don't know, kind of funny. Just a weird little design fail there. Um, they've obviously put most of their development into this controller, and um, I'll tell you my reasoning for that in a minute here, but um, as you can see, it's got these two little sticks that pop off and um, go in here because you wouldn't want these poking you in the butt when you have this in your, you know, carrying this like a wallet. Um, the controls feel really smooth and I, it, it's easy to fly. Um, I haven't really had a, any complaints about that. My one kind of complaint is that when you open this, the uh, throttle slash yaw stick over here catches on the edge of this thing which is kind of annoying and I mean they've sort of fixed that by making the sticks removable so I guess I really shouldn't complain um, but one thing that I can and do complain about is this hinge right here isn't a hinge it's a piece of tape that they just stuck on the outside um, and I should say now that I paid $45 for this and for $45 you know, I don't want there to be tape on it. It's just, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just an asshole. Uh, it's got a power button on the back. Um, trick mode, which lets you do, you know, rolls and flips and whatnot. Um, three different speeds, which affect the uh, pitch and roll. Probably the yaw, too, I would imagine. Um, but, yeah, it's it doesn't have uh, yaw trim, as you can see. But I haven't needed it. Um, it's just been pretty, you know, pretty smooth without it. Uh, the calibration sequence is pretty simple. You just turn this on, turn that on, full throttle all the way back, beeps twice, and you know you're good to fly, which is pretty standard with this. But I mean, it's overall, it's it's a nice little drone. It's very lightweight. It uh, it's very responsive. It recovers very well, um, and I, all that is good. But, I'm still stuck on that $45 price tag, and I'm going to show you why. Because this, right here, I'll move this over a little bit. This is another micro drone, which I actually bought um, while I was waiting for this one to show up, because I was, I was bored, and it took a really long time to get here. I ordered this in July, I think, or, yeah, probably the beginning of July, and I didn't receive it until late November. Um, this... I bought from HobbyKing.com for the princely sum of $15, and I think they even shipped it for free. So it was about $15 plus tax, which in California is, I don't know, 7 point something. Um, and this is basically the same idea. The quadcopter fits in here, and before I start showing you this controller, I want to point out that these are almost identical in every single way. The charging connection on the Axis drone is different. It's got a little barrel connector. This has like a little two-pin type Molex thing. I don't know what the hell that's called. Um, the generic drone is a little bit heavier, 
And when I say a little bit, I mean it's like imperceptibly heavier. I, I weighted them and I don't remember what the difference was, but this is a little heavier. The props are pretty much identical. The props for the Axis drone are, I think, two tenths or no, one tenth of an inch bigger, but they're interchangeable. I've swapped them around. They fly with each other's props. <laughs> You're all good. Um, so when this says world's smallest quadcopter, I, you know, I obviously that's complete BS. So I'm going to prove that to you here. As you can see, this is I've already set this. Uh, it's about on the center of the uh, prop shafts there and this is at 1.28 inches and yes I'm using inches because this is America and so you can see the Axis drone is exactly the same um, outside dimensions are 1.67 inches and it's 1.69 so I mean it's this is exactly the same basically and um, when you power up this controller the pairing process and the calibration process is exactly the same the beeps that they make are exactly the same um, the access drone has red and green LEDs the generic drone has red and blue LEDs other than that they are functionally the same um, the controller for this is I gotta say it doesn't have tape on it so it's already a step ahead of the Axis Drones controller um, it doesn't have the little you know charging thing where you can plug it in in here it has a cable back here and um, let me just say that the charging time for both of these is pretty slow I mean it takes about 15-20 minutes to fully charge it um, whereas you know when you compare that to like the, the you know, three or four minute fly time which, well, probably about five, six minutes, unless you really punch it. Um, you know, it's pretty slow. I will say, however, that the generic drone came with a USB charging cable, which greatly cuts down the charging time. I mean, it's a fraction of the time. And um, the Axis drone did not ship with a USB cable, but it shipped with a little business card explaining that they weren't able to get the USB cables made in time. Uh, apparently they made them when there was some issue with quality control or something. So um, they're going to make those available on their website at some point. And it had a coupon code that you can, lets me get one for free. So I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be pretty much the same when I do eventually get around to doing that. Um, the generic drone has pitch, yaw, and roll and trim. It has a return to home feature, which does not work. It has a headless mode feature, which does not work. Um, one thing that's kind of dumb, none of these buttons are labeled when you buy it. Um, so as you can see, I, it's kind of worn off, but I've gone ahead and kind of written, you know, wrote my own labeling on it, which is necessary because the instructions for this are some of the worst Chinglish I have ever encountered in my life. It's You kind of have to interpret it on a metaphoric level in order to really understand it. The instructions for the wallet drone were great, so I guess that's $45. I mean, this is $15, this is $30 more. So, I I mean, it's, I would say this is overall, a Axis drone is better in some ways, but it's not $30 better. It's maybe $10 better at the most. Um, this also takes four AA batteries. There's two here and two here, which kind of blew my mind at first because I took one of them off and put two in it, and I assumed that was it and didn't work. So eventually I figured out there was another two in there. Um, the Axis drone comes with one set of props, and then because they took so long, they gave me this thank you card, which has another set of props attached to the back. Um, the generic drone comes with two sets of props as well, and it also comes with these goofy little landing things, landing feet you can put on the bottom, which are a huge pain in the ass because they get caught in everything, so I'm going to use those. Um, it also came with like this prop guard shroud thing you can put around the edge, um, which is good, I guess, if you don't really know what you're doing and you're crashing into walls a lot. It makes it a little bit more forgiving, but um, I broke it, and it's gone, so I can't show you that. Uh, and it's totally fine to fly it without it. 
far as flying them goes, they are pretty much identical. The control sticks on this are a little bit short, which kind of makes it annoying. Um, and I've already tried, you can't put the sticks from this on here. They're, the little dimples are too big. Well, you can, you can remove the sticks from this. So maybe, you know, if you have a 3D printer or something, you could probably knock out a couple bigger ones. Um, that's what it comes down to, guys. Um, I'd love to say that the wallet drone is light years ahead of the uh, generic drone, which is what I was completely expecting. I bought this expecting this to be a complete and utter turd, but it's just not. They are comparable. And um, I even venture to say that this is a little bit, this feels like a better put together package. I know it's bigger, but I like it. I have huge hands, man. Um, it just feels better. The controller doesn't feel cheap. Uh, the drone is basically identical. And it's $30 cheaper. So, Access Drones, I'm sure you guys are good people. I'm sure you're trying to do a cool thing here. But, you know, it's been done. And it's been done fairly well. And it's been done fairly cheap. So I'm going to post a link to both of these in the, the description below. And I'm going to be making another video pretty soon where I'm going to take these apart. And um, see if they really are, how identical they really are, the controllers and the, the actual drones themselves. So um, stick around for that. I'll post a link to that as well, and um, yeah, have a great day.